Any other day, this would have been the top story, but not yesterday. Rod Rosenstein telling the Senate he would not have signed the FISA warrant for former Trump campaign aide Carter Page had he known about the deep-seated deception surrounding the probe. If you knew then what you know now, would you have signed the warrant application? No, I would not. Okay. Who are we to hold responsible? Yes. You're saying it's not you. No, no, I'm, I'm saying, Senator, that I am accountable for it. But the question is, why did it happen? Do you consider it to be an utterly baseless, corrupt criminal investigation? I do not consider the investigation to be corrupt. I understand the president's frustration given the outcome. So what does that testimony from the former deputy attorney general mean for the investigation into the investigators? Here to debate, Democrat strategist Wendy Osefo and Republican strategist Chris Prudhomme. Guys, thanks for being here. Wendy, first question to you. You heard that testimony. Does Rosenstein's testimony establish evidence of corruption in the Obama, DOJ, and FBI? I, I do not believe so. I think that the two things that Rosenstein said that was really important was he said that he had the right to bring about the special counsel, as well as the fact that he does not believe that the investigation was corrupt. And we have to make sure that we look at those th two things and we don't look at them in a silo. Furthermore, as we look at the evidence, the Russia interference in the 2016 election still remains. So yes, he should not have signed off on the FISA warrant, having he had the information that he does now, but does not take away Way, nor mitigate the fact that there was some level of interference there and the American people needed to know the truth. And that is what we know as of today. Chris, your response. Oh, look, the truth is there absolutely was uh, no collusion between Trump uh, advising the campaign in Russia. Uh, the entire thing is a hoax. I mean, it certainly cost uh, uh, members of Congress their seats. I mean, it was just absolutely uh, an entire fabrication. It's still Dozier. The entire uh, process is a joke. And, and obviously, Rosenstein has obviously acknowledged uh, he was not assigned the warrant, knowing what he knows uh, now. Uh, look, the Democrats ha have been bent from day one to do anything they can to put President Trump out of office to cause any kind of interference. And that's what this entire process is about. We, we wasted so much time and uh, uh, months uh, just over an investigation that was a complete uh, joke and a complete fabrication. And it's not fair. It's not right. And here we are now focusing on, obviously, on other things. But the entire process was skewed. It doesn't make sense at all. And we know now that there were individuals in uh, uh, government agencies uh, that obviously uh, partnered up, so to speak, and obviously didn't like the president. And that's what this is about. At the end of the day, bottom line, there was no co collaboration with Trump campaign advisors and Russia. That's the bottom line. All right, I want to get to a different topic. While I have you here, the topic of the day, police reform. Everybody's talking about it, including the two candidates for president this year, Joe Biden, vowing to make police reform a huge part of his platform. The question really is, how significant will police reform be in the 2020 election? Both sides have weighed in. Let's listen to this sound for both candidates and then get your opinion on the backside. Take a listen. In the first 100 days of my presidency, I've committed to creating a National Police Oversight Commission. I've long believed we need real community policing. I made a statement about what he should do. I said, he's been there for 43 years. He was vice president for eight years. He didn't do a thing. Chris? Along the lines of what the president said, you give me the impression that Joe Biden has had his chance and he has failed and he shouldn't get another chance. Why do you say that? Uh, look, he's been a politician for, for decades, okay? If he was going to do something about it now, or, or excuse me, then, a uh, commission, it, it would have already been done. I'm so tired of these guys uh, just saying what they want to say in terms of getting political votes or support and, and, and trying to campaign in terms of, instead of focusing on overall cause. If it was going to happen, it would have already happened. For goodness sakes, he was vice president under Obama. They had a black attorney general, okay, and obviously a black president, and they still couldn't get it done. Uh, this is about making solutions. It's about having an effective process right now. We don't we don't need people to talk. We don't, we don't need fabricated commissions. Wendy, quickly, your response. Let us be clear. Police reform has to be at the top of the agenda because the truth of the matter is even when we look at the case of George Floyd, if those officers are convicted, that is just four officers. There is systemic racism in the police 
uh, force. There is systemic racism in the police force. And in order for us to be able to move forward as a country, we have to have police reform that speaks to not only Minneapolis, that speaks to not only Ferguson, but that speaks to the nation. And that is what's really important. So whether it's Biden or his team, they need to come up with a very strong policy about how they're going to handle police officers and the bad actors within the police force because our country cannot be broken by these bad actors. And again, it is a systemic problem. It's not individuals, it is Chris, systemic, and that has to be addressed. Chris, Chris, I got to go. I can't let you get in a response there. We got to go. But I, I appreciate your time. Great debate. Obviously, this is not an issue that is going away anytime soon. Wendy and Chris, we appreciate it. Jillian, over to you. Thanks so much.